Hello, I'm Linda Lagarde Grover, and I'm going to read you a, um, an excerpt from my book called The Road Back to Sweetgrass. This little section is called The Power of Fry Bread. As she approached elderhood, Margie Robineau had come to be regarded as unarguably the hands-down best fry bread maker on the entire Moje Point Indian Reservation. Although she had officially held that title since she was 22, Indian country protocol and etiquette called for no recognition beyond that Margie, she makes pretty good fry bread, until after Annie Buck, venerable elder and longtime fry bread queen, had died. Only then, and after a decent and respectful interval, did Margie become the person to ask about the fine points of fry bread making baking soda, powder, or yeast, commodity flour or gold metal, lard or Crisco, shortening or oil, spoon or hands, granulated sugar or powdered, rolled or sprinkled, cinnamon, honey, jelly, butter, no inquiries about margarine, maple syrup, loaded Indian tacos or fry bread, plain and simple. Margie's fry bread was so light it all but rose from the plate, so tender as to be all but unfelt in the mouth, so tasty that the very thought that the moment couldn't last forever brought to the eater an undertone of sorrow that added an intangible brine, like a grain of salt from dried tears yet to be wept. The golden rings that bloomed as they deep fried in hot lard grew from a dough mixture that she varied from day to day. Sometimes she used wheat flour, sometimes white. Sometimes she added blueberries. On occasion, if she was in a hurry, she didn't even let the dough rest before she fried it, sending it into the near smoking grease deprived of its gestation in the dark and quiet of the dishcloth covered mixing bowl. Variations didn't seem to matter. The resulting quality was always the same. She never minded if someone wanted to observe her while she cooked. After all, wasn't that the way of old-time Ojibwe tradition? To share, to teach by example, to learn by watching? Many watched, committing to memory her actions. They noted that she used sometimes her hands, sometimes a metal measuring cup for the flour. Sometimes her hands, sometimes a tablespoon from the silverware drawer for the leavening. Sometimes her hands, sometimes a wooden spoon to stir. Those combinations, along with the precisely inexact points at which she added warm water, were tried by women all over Moje Point. Why, then they asked themselves and each other, could no one else duplicate the fry bread that Margie made in her tiny dark and crowded kitchen at home in the sweet grass cabin and brought to potlucks and powwows. What was her secret? What wasn't she telling? Three of the Dion sisters, Yvonne, Annette, and Cecile, drove their ancient mother from the other side of the reservation, almost to the border between Moje and town, one morning to pay a call on Margie. As they passed the Reservation Business Committee building, Dale Ann, the Moje Point Tribal Education Director and oldest of the Dion girls, glanced out of her office window and recognized Annette's car careening off the road to take the shortcut through the RBC driveway and on to the road that led to Sweetgrass. Nima Sayug, Andi Girisha, sisters, where are you going to? She said aloud, ducking behind the blinds. Knowing that the road to Sweetgrass crossed the southernmost corner of the LaForce La allotment, she called to alert Margie, who then called her lady friend Teresa to come to the little house for a woman party. Margie and Teresa were ready for company and waiting at the door when the car drove up the driveway through the sumac stand that obscured the house from the road. The sisters opened the car doors, which let in the mysterious and elusive scent of Sweetgrass that floated on the lightest of breezes to tease their noses. The Dione women inhaled deeply, turning their heads to follow the scent, to capture it. The intake calmed their demeanors, which became nearly consistently pleasant 
for the time they were on the La Force family allotment grounds. Teresa waved hugely. Minogijigud, Margie, it's the Dion ladies. Anin, Margie, Anin, Teresa, it's good to see you, they said, sweet as boiled down sap. We were just taking mother here for a little ride, and when we saw you were home, we decided to stop by. Bindigan, gae namatabin. While Margie welcomed the women and found them comfortable places to sit, near the door for Yvonne, who suffered from hot flashes, next to the stove for Annette, who was always cold, Teresa switched on the Mr. Coffee and set the kettle on the stove for tea. Courteously, she asked about Mrs. Dion's bad knee and how she liked her new washing machine and how all the grandchildren and great-grandchildren were while she poured coffee and hot water and offered sugar and milk. Cecile reminded Margie and Teresa that she couldn't tolerate dairy at all. Would you ladies eat a little fry bread if I mix some up, asked Margie. The ladies thought they could if the pieces weren't too big. And how is Dale Ann, she asked, lifting the mixing bowl from the bottom cupboard. Yes, what is Big Sister up to, Teresa inquired. Busy all the time these days, I bet, eh? She settled into her chair to observe the Dion's while they watched Margie prepare a batch of fry bread. Old Lady Dion took half milk and half coffee with four sugars, which she stirred for a full minute. Nice and hot, she complimented, wrapping her cup in a napkin to lift it. It's good. You girls make good coffee. My big girl? Oh, she's busy. Mm -hmm. Working, taking care of things all over the reservation. But you know, no matter how busy she gets, she always makes time for me, whatever I need. She sighed happily. And then, Annette, get me something for my feet, she said impatiently. There's no more chairs, Annette said critically, then remembered where she was and what she wanted and smiled stiffly at the room. I don't think. Her dimples all but creaked. Here you go, Auntie Grace. Teresa put her own chair under the old woman's legs, first padding it with her sweater. Is that better? You're a good girl, Teresa. Now, what was I saying? Oh, I remember, yes, yes, big sister. Busy all over the reservation. She always did make us proud, always doing something nice for somebody. Had that good job, and then she went back to school. And she was so smart there, she made us all proud. And then she... She was way too busy to get married, muttered Yvonne. Even if somebody would have asked her, whispered Cecile. Gaj again, skiwi minikwe ina dudushabu, asked Annette. Cat, you want some milk to drink? And all those little kids, my, she treated them just like they were her own. But now that she's in charge of all that education, she's got so much going on with everything she has to do. She just doesn't have much time to be at Head Start anymore. Those little kids, they all love her. They must really miss her. She stops by sometimes, though, and... Uh, while their mother talked, the Dion girls sugared their tea and coffee then let it grow cold, ignoring it to watch closely as Margie worked, intending once and for all to discover what was the secret ingredient in the dough that she mixed and handled. They saw nothing unusual, just the mixing of the ingredients that could be found in their own kitchen cupboards. What sleight of hand was Margie using? What motions did she make that were quicker than the eye? The fry bread was, as always, delectable perhaps even more than usual, each this time perhaps even too good to dump. Yvonne had a lot of pride, which could be either a source of strength or the source of occasional but regular downfalls. She knew that and was too proud to change, but she humbled herself to ask if Margie would write down the recipe. Here is what Margie wrote. Fry bread, almost two cups of flour, almost a tablespoon of BP, pretty small size pinch of salt, a little sugar, maybe a teaspoon. This is up to you if you want. Mix this in a good sized bowl and then make a little river in a circle. Add warm water to make the dough nice and soft. 
Cover and give it a little rest before you mix, after you mix. Fry it like donuts. Good with butter or honey or jelly or syrup or plain. This makes a good lugolette too. For lug, bake it in a pan, cut it up, but grease the pan first. Away from the spell of sweetgrass, the demeanor of the Dione girls returned to its norm. In the front seat, Yvonne and Annette argued over the radio, first one and then the other, punching the selection button every few minutes to switch from country western to oldies, oldies to country western. In the back seat, Cecile fidgeted until her mother told her to sit still. She was making her car sick. Anyhow, that's the way we always make it, just the same way Margie did, Annette complained. Well, next time we'll use yeast instead of baking powder or else soda. Maybe that's what she's been doing. Maybe she's been using all three. Yvonne wondered if it was Margie's stove. Notice she never makes it any place else but at her own house. And that Teresa sitting there like that, all smiling and just quiet, you know she knows all about it. Yvonne expressed this indignantly. And after her stealing Margie's man too, why would Margie ever even talk to her? The vision that crossed Annette's mind and eyes of Michael Washington as a young man diverted her attention. The car swerved slightly, and in the back seat, Cecile squealed. Eh, yeah, sister, watch your driving there. You want to go right off the road? She snapped. The car righted. She tossed her head. Well, Margie sure showed her. Who gets to be the big boss lady at Chihuahuac? Not Teresa. Margie, prob Michael probably helped her get that job. He owes her plenty. Not to mention his father. And all I can say is it's a good thing her fry bread is as soft as it is. Otherwise, that old Joe Washington would probably have starved to death on the rest of his cooking. Cecile grumbled. She snuck something in there when we weren't looking. She's just a stingy gut, that Margie, keeping her stupid secret to herself. Well, she can just have it. Old Lady Dion told her girls that Margie had made the fry bread as she always had, with the same results, and that perhaps it was jealousy that was causing their bread to toughen and shrink. Jealousy? Jealousy. Without speaking aloud, the sisters agreed to silence in the car for the remainder of the ride back to the Dion allotment, and Annette turned up Garth Brooks. Here is part of Margie's secret unrequited love. The LaForce family land allotment in sweetgrass and not too much sugar when you add that little bit. But without Joe Washington's grandmother, their three would have remained unconnected, as would have the ingredients that went into Margie's mixing bowl and came out fry bread, as would have the ingredients that went into her existence and came out Margie's life. Miigwech for listening to me. Gig wabamin.